passion, the conviction, who you are. You know what? I missed out on probably the biggest thing that I could probably do in my life. What we're seeing is we can do this new phase. Not only is he all energy. I'm building on our franchise. It's mattress. It's the passion that he wishes. Talk about where we're headed and uh, it's just such an exciting time for us. Welcome to the Dream Makers Podcast, where if you don't snooze, you lose. Our goal here is to tell you all about what is, what's happening in the industry, in the sleep industry, what's happening today. We're going to talk a little bit about franchising, and I could not be more honored to have our guest, the man, the myth, the legend, Chris Connor. This guy is the owner of FMS. Uh, he has taken some companies that you may have heard out there, Jimmy John's, Culver's, a couple people like that. He has helped be a part of that process, and we're going to talk a little bit about it today. And just first and foremost, Chris... Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Matt. Great to be here, man. I'm excited. We are so excited. So let's, you know, I got so many questions for you. We've hung out with you the last couple of days. You came to our 905 today. You got to experience a little bit of the stores. You got some more stuff today uh, in the mattress side of the world. But first and foremost, I always like to know, I know you're a father of two kids. Uh, tell me, tell me your story. Tell, yeah. tell us a little bit about you really quick. You know, the, the stuff that really matters. I've, I've been married for 15 years. Uh, mm. amazing wife. She's a, uh, a, a pediatric neuropsychologist. So she's the smart one of the, of the family. <laughs> uh, we've got two kids, uh, Ashton's eight and Jameson is five, uh, boy and a girl. So we're, we've got this great family set up and, you know, uh, just a lot of fun. Every day is an adventure at home. I love it. I love it. And it's funny. We have so many things in common from the car seat stuck in the back of the car to just, you know, I think one thing that really excites me about you and one of the reasons we're doing some business together in, in the future is, is you're a family guy. You know what I mean? And you and I have that in common. If we didn't talk, we talked about a million different things in the last two days, but something special about you is the reason you do all of this is because of your family. You know, that is definitely your why. And that's something that I talk about all the time is like, Nothing is more important than that and making sure that you, you hold that there's we know Mutually so many millionaires and billionaires out there that they never got that figured out or never had kids or just never understood Their why and 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 you could be depressed and I think we have that same cut from the same cloth where Nothing else matters like that's the most important thing it, you know and, and I and man, you know I think more billionaires and multi multi millionaires than I do but I've certainly worked with plenty who on paper have it all right you know they've got they've got the houses the cars certainly all Absolutely. the money and if they mess up that family side which I, I am the biggest one of the biggest proponents for entrepreneurship i love entrepreneurship um i'm just such a proponent for it for yeah. for most people to find their path in entrepreneurship i do think that sometimes it can become consuming you can mess up things like family personal side so i, I think that just having a good balance making sure that you're aware of that side of your life and keeping that balance too is, is critical. I mean, you can make all the money in the world and if you mess up your family and don't pay attention to things that matter at home, it's, it's not a win. Amen. So well said. Uh, and I, I love that. So tell me, you know, one of the things I talk about in like, you know, even in my book, The Serial Dadpreneur is like bending time is what I call it, but it's being able to get up before your family. Like I, I have a routine that I get up before anybody moves in my house, sometimes hours before that. And then, you know, throughout the evenings, maybe after they go to bed, or if they're doing something, you know, on a weekend, I, I find the time that I can still get a little bit of work done, but it doesn't affect my family. And I'm a firm believer. Whenever that clock is done, I'm, you know, you're probably similar to me that I'm, I feel like I'm three to six months behind every day of the week. So my work's never going to get caught up anyway. So I have to just stop and walk away and go play with my family, you know. So at five o'clock or six o'clock, if they're done with dance or whatever it is, I'm done and I move on. And and that's a that's a something that I've learned that I've had to do because if I waited till the work done to go home, I would never go home, you know. So I cut yeah. myself when I got to get out of here. I spend every weekend with my family. The nights I'm there, I'm present. I'm at every game. I'm, I mean, that's just a, but it's a priority. It's my number one priority in life. But. What do you have on that? Like, tell me, uh, what's your secrets? How are you making this all work? You know, man, I, I wish I could say I've got the, the, the formula here. And it took me probably, so, so my, my background, my father was a corporate executive. Uh, worked for a big company his whole life. Uh, to me, that was the, what I saw as being success. You know, you work for a right. company for 30, 40 years, build up a 401k, you know, retire with that company. Um, didn't work out that way for him. And, and, uh, you know, our whole family went through a moment where it kind of fell apart at the end and, and, uh, right before they maybe should have retired. In the meantime, I start doing franchising work and I'm working with entrepreneurs and I'm seeing the difference between people that take control of their future. They own their financial freedom. 
Uh, they have an asset at the end of the day and a business that they've built, all these kind of benefits to it. Yeah. So I jumped into entrepreneurship without having any real background in it or seeing people as entrepreneurs. And it was tough. I mean, I, I worked 100, 120 hours a week. Mm-hmm. I ignored my wife. It was before kids. Um, and there were plenty of come to Jesus moments where my wife sat me down and said, here's how it's going to work or this isn't going to work. And I was like, okay, we'll shift gears. Let's try this here. Let's yeah. do this a little bit differently. Um, so I did have to, to learn how to do things. And I think you hit the, the nail on the head. You need to embrace the journey. And, and it sounds cheesy, but mm-hmm. it's not about making sure everything on the checklist is checked off. Um, love your computer screen downstairs like a rainbow of sticky notes. <laughs> we didn't get them all off your computer today at our, yeah. at our conversations, but yeah. we had great conversations. We accomplished a lot. And it's all right if things get pushed to tomorrow or later this afternoon. Right. Um, so I think that's, that's a good way to look at it is just have fun, embrace the journey. Don't look like every day you have to wrap everything up. And, and one of the things that I actually like is there is always something to do. Absolutely. It's never like a dull moment. It's it makes it fun, yeah. thrilling, you know? I love that. Yeah. So great advice. Uh, you know, the journey is always going to continue on, but uh, embrace the moment, you know, and make sure you protect your culture and your own family. You know, I love that. And you, you it sounds like you had to go through some trying times to get to that point, you know? So sometimes our wives need to say... Come on, get your shit together. Yeah. And we got to get our shit together. Step back, dude. Let's, yeah. let's look at what's important here. Yeah. Um, and, and you've got kids around the same age range as mine, too. Yeah. And then it becomes so real when you turn around and your kid's like two years older or yeah. a year older. And they, and they, right. they look different. It's like, man, I, I need to be here. I mm-hmm. cannot give up those moments and just extremely important. It's the most important. 100%. Okay. It is. That's what, that's what life is all about. And, you know. Uh, it is my why. And one thing that I've learned too, and you probably the same is like, even when I do leave, if I've got a stressful day and I put out 900 fires and I'm like, I get to my kids and that's all gone. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just playing chess and I'm putting <laughs> Legos together. And it's like, I forget about that. That is my vice. That is what I need to get a re- master reset to start the next day over and just hit the ground running again. So it is. I love it. it. Is. So let's talk uh, outside of family. Like I, I, I love to start there because you just, you, you do, you're the epitome of that, that family first guy. And I love that about you. So, um, but, uh, FMS it's called franchise marketing systems, right? Yep. Franchise marketing systems. And tell us how that came about. So, uh, you know, I've said a little bit about this, but what, what Chris really does is you create more entrepreneurs and you're helping turn a, a, a something that could be a coffee shop or a, a gym or a mattress store. And you're going nationwide and you're helping somebody take an idea small to very, very large, but tell, tell us about you. What, what is this, What is FMS? Yeah. Uh, and I, I love the franchise model because I am so passionate about entrepreneurship. To me, franchising is a great vehicle to not only to scale a brand and help an entrepreneur like you has a vision, has a bigger picture goal and has a market opportunity that you couldn't accomplish with your own company owned stores. It would just be too tough to hire people all over the country and to put the money into leases and all those things. Franchising can help you accomplish that if it's done right and it has to be executed correctly. So that's really where we come in is we act as a, a almost like the franchise department in a lot of ways for brands that are just getting into franchising, guiding them, uh, providing the resources, providing the insight and the industry expertise and just from having done this for a long time. Um, I also work in this on the other side of it, which is coaching new entrepreneurs who are, who are looking at investing in a franchise. And I'm, I'm as much, maybe even more passionate about that side when you can open up someone's eyes and change their life by helping them transition into business ownership. Mm-hmm. Um, there are people that maybe aren't designed to be a business owner and that's okay, but it's my opinion, a lot of people are, they just don't know how to do it. They don't have the courage to do it. And that's where the Matt Smith steps in and says, I've got the path. I have the blueprint. I've Mm -hmm. done this before. Give the pat on the back. You can do it. And now all of a sudden, someone's life trajectory has completely changed. You've opened up tons of potential for them, energy and excitement and passion for what they do that they probably never felt before when they've, when they've just had a, you know, W2 position type thing. Yeah. So where we come in, where FMS comes in is we provide the infrastructure, the planning, all the documentation to help a company become a franchise. Things like figuring out franchise fees and royalties and territory modeling, buyer profiles, like who are we going to sell this franchise to? Uh, We go through a competitive analysis to figure out how do we stack up against others in the industry? Who's out there? What are we going to do to take market share and to position successfully against them? 
Um, there's a, a significant amount of legal work that goes into franchise development. Um, we work a lot with third-party lawyers to do the FDD, franchise disclosure documents, franchise agreements. There's some filings that you have to go through in certain states, all stuff that we oversee and, and work with, um, training programs, operations manuals, and then all the collateral and things that we need to sell with and promote with. We, we have a, a great team of people that, that do all of that and marketers and designers. Where what we do is unique in the space is we will actually take that forward and sell with the client and execute the model with the client. And that's where I saw an opportunity when, when I started this was that no one was helping carry the ball forward, actually get in the trenches, get hands dirty and mm -hmm. make this stuff happen in the field. I love it. I love it. There's so much, there's so much in that that I, I want to talk about, but I think you know, one of the, we've, we've met, you know, I, uh, I use franchise maker was a guy, you know, uh, you know, of Dave, a great guy helped us turn into franchise. So a lot of that stuff, but you do beginning to end. And Dave was, I mean, a, a, such a big part of, cause I was, it was the unknown territory for me. So being an entrepreneur, I've, I've, I think I've owned a, somewhere around 11 or 12 businesses in this community. And, and the, the part of getting it outside of this community was very unknown territory for me. So finding somebody like yourself or Dave or somebody that really understands how to take that to that next level was was huge for me. And it was, and it's still, I mean, I'm still learning a lot, but like you said, I think the thing that I love is, is I've met mattress owners. I've met gym owners out there. They've never been able to get their mom and pop's place to the next level. Cause they have no idea what what's next or how do I, how do I get that next company? How do I get that financing place? How do I teach people how to sleep? How do I get this technology? How do I get a loan for that? It is so much unknown. And, and truly in my head, it's, it's, you know, 20 years, we have a hundred years of mattress experience in this building, but you're expediting your potential 10, 20 years of experience of yourself and hard nights and falling on your face and learning that lesson that I've already learned. You know, I've learned it over and over and over again. And then I've developed a system without those failures. You know what I mean? I mean, it's either learn or, or you, you win and we're learning a lot, but we're also winning a lot. And that's what this is all about is how do you, how do you create that, that path? Like you said, that, that yellow brick road that says, this is, this is the path and it's already done for you and you've got to phone a friend. It's not you against the world. It's your team. You have an entire team back there, which is worth that small franchise fee to have a team that you're working with. You know, it's not you against everything else out there. So I love what you're doing and you've worked with, you've, you've been a part of some pretty big successes out there. Yeah, we, we've, we definitely have got some, uh, some awesome wins along the way. And, uh, you know, I, I, Dave with Franchise Maker, phenomenal guy, great oh, yeah. resource in the space. Absolutely. And, um, if this model is done right, the beauty of franchising, you, 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 the way you described it is great. All the time, money, the mistakes, the things that you have done as the franchisor and, and figured out what doesn't work and what does work, absolutely is a whole lot more than one franchise fee. And, and, mm -hmm. and that's the presentation to a buyer is, we're gonna give you all these years, we're gonna give you this blueprint, this roadmap, so you don't have to learn it yourself. And, and, and when I'm talking to a franchise buyer, I'm, I, I like to be really upfront about the whole discussion. Yeah. You absolutely could go out and do this on your own. Absolutely. No question. 100%. I mean, you could lease your own space. You could figure out vendor arrangements. Yeah. You could come up with your own brand. Uh, you could write your own plan. You could hire your own team and all this stuff. What I'm presenting to you is that we're going to shorten that learning curve, hopefully both from the standpoint of you becoming proficient in the mattress retail space, but also in, in how quickly you can get, get profitable. For sure. Because we know how to, how to manage your money, we know how to advertise, we have all these tools and techniques that we've picked up from screwing things up along the way and figuring Absolutely. out what works and what doesn't work, and you get that in a box. Yeah. The best franchise relationships that I've, I've been a part of, like the Jimmy Johns of the world, and, and uh, um, uh, Anytime Fitness has been one that's been run great. I mean, these really prolific franchise brands the relationship is very equitable. It's not always perfect. You're going to have some locations that don't work in every system, but the good systems minimize those failures. They, uh, they find ways to leverage buying power, whether it be on the product side or the advertising side or uh, just any economic element of the business itself where the franchisee now is able to capitalize on, we've got a bigger network now buying together and leveraging that, those economies of scale. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's definitely, going back to the whole family discussion, the best franchise systems are absolutely run like families. Yeah. And, and I think the way you work, this 905 meeting that we just went through, the culture, the energy, the, the openness. I mean, it, it, this is a team of people that have been empowered. They're trusted. Uh, they work and feel and act like they're owners. 
that's the mentality that works in franchising, maybe at, at a little different level because now these are business owners, but it's the same thinking. And, uh, and I think that's one of the reasons why you're going to be fantastic as a franchisor with Snooze. Um, the other reason that I think you'll be great, and I, I really like the fact that you have been on the other side of it. Mm-hmm. You've owned franchises also, and you've experienced you know, what that's like and how it works. And that, that perspective lends itself exceptionally well to becoming a franchisor. You've been there. You get yeah. it. You know how to communicate. You know what they're looking for. You know what value prop is going to make a difference. That's going to be a, a, a big feather in your cap. I love that. No, and I, I really appreciate that. And I think, you know, and the other thing is we, I, I worked 18 years on the front line. You know, I think that I, I was able to see a franchise and that's kind of what created this. What we're doing is because I, I was in the mattress business. I sold beds for 18 years and I was in a franchise business for 15 years of those times kind of overlapping at the same time. So I saw, well, if we could get this system and this system together, we might be able to do something special here. You know, knowing what I know on this side of it and then developing the right teams here. And I think to what you said, I think franchising to me is, is we've talked about this several times is that the, sometimes you get stuck working in the business and you never are able to scale. This allows you to work on the business sometimes where yes, you want to, you want to be there to learn it, but you want to be the business guy that's opening more in multiple locations. So it allows you to not work in the business saying, shoot, I got to do this again. I got to get back in there. And then, you know, sometimes it's a, it's like you said yesterday, I believe it was like, Sometimes you intend on doing it for a day or two until you can replace yourself. But then seven years later, 15 years later, you're still doing it because you're stuck working in the business because just fires are coming at you and you just, you don't know how to hire and you don't know how to get that other vendor. How do I negotiate this or how to that? So getting into a franchise to me is just, it's a no brainer. You know, it absolutely gives you brand recognition and it gives you a team, you know, a team that's there for you. And I tell all my franchisees, call me any day, any night, whatever. We are your phone of friends. We're going through this together. And and yes, the, the Journey, part of the journey is it's falling on your face sometimes, but you're, you're doing it with an entire team and you've got a, a whole team of people that are going to help pick you back up and say, this is how we're going to do this, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ray Crack had this saying that's like way overused now, but you can, if franchising gives you the opportunity to be in business for yourself, but not by yourself. And, and it, and it really speaks to that whole yeah. point. Just, you've got a team, you've got resources, um, you have infrastructure around you, <clears throat> and and it's it's reality is that a franchised business that you a, a, that you own as a franchisee is worth more as an asset than a business that is a one location owner operator business yeah. because the brand equity, because the buying power, um, because the value that comes with a with a franchise mm-hmm. network. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great <laughs> point. That's I mean, for one quick second, it's something that we try to train at the beginning too. Is that an exit strategy. Like I think everybody needs to have an exit strategy at some point, some time, whatever that is, pass it to your kids, sell it, uh, whatever. There's got to be, you know, at some point we talk about that early on in the franchising side of it too. But I mean, from your standpoint, it's a lot stronger exit strategy if you're in a franchise than it is if you're Matt's mattress or Chris's mattress or anything out there, Matt's burgers, right? It, it is. Well, well, and to take that point further, where, where I have seen the best, most successful franchisees in any system are ones that go deep with a brand. They figure it out. It works. This guy, Matt's a good guy. He takes care of me. He's tra- his team trains me. Uh, they're delivering on the promises they've given me. I'm going to buy a second location. I'm going to open up a third snooze and a fourth. And I have met franchisees that have literally taken their company public just owning franchises. Mm. I mean, at that point, it's hundreds and hundreds of locations. But this model works unbelievably well when an investor leverages the fact that you have a proven system, a proven business model, and then continues to replicate it for themselves. Mm-hmm. Now you're, you're not only building an asset that is, uh, that is successful and working, but you're also proving that successful business is not dependent on you as the franchise owner. You're putting managers in place. You're running a network of stores within the franchise brand. Mm-hmm. Now you get valuations that can go up to you know, three, four times your earnings instead of one or one and a half times your earnings if it's a store that you're working in every day. So I, I think one of the things that we have talked about, I, I, I get the impression you're totally on board. You, you want this for franchisees is to support multi-unit ownership. I think that's one of the great advantages and opportunities to snooze. Mm-hmm. Um, you're proving it here. You can do it with the right people in place, with the right team in place. Absolutely an opportunity for a franchise owner to go deep with this brand and, and really build a network for themselves within snooze. Love it. Yeah, I appreciate it. And I, yeah, I mean, to your point, that's our, our goal is to just have that system to, to 
to already fit, fought that fight for you where you really have a blueprint to get to whatever you're trying to do. Yeah. Um, so tell me, you know, you're, you've had some pretty good successes out there. What's your, what's a favorite success story that you've got that you've been a part of that you've seen somebody go from small to large and maybe some franchisees that have gone from one location to 50 locations on an individual level too. I mean, tell me some successes. So uh, I have, uh, I've got some big brands that I've worked with uh, two men in a truck, um, Anytime Fitness, Costco, Ford, Delta Airlines. The reality is Delta Airlines was successful before they met Chris Conner. Um, you know, they hired me to do something within one of their growth channels. Love it. Looks great, you know, to say know we this. work with Delta yeah. Airlines. Yeah. Um, so but, can I buy a franchise Delta Airlines, buy some airplanes? We can. We'll ship the plane right over. <laughs> let's we'll do this. the address. <laughs> Nick, let's do that. <laughs> let's we, go. We, we deserve it, Nick. Can Come I fly? On. Let's go. Yeah, Nick uh, can do it. Exactly. Uh, the ones that I would look at that I would say my, my most pride and, and I'm, I'm really proud of are the ones that we started with when they had one location and we helped them get into the franchise model. Uh, we've got a couple in the restoration space. Restoration One is, is a brand that I helped start from the very beginning, single location, um, successful business. I mean, he had a successful restoration company. This is like providing um, flood damage support when your basement floods or fire damage, that kind of a thing. Successful location, but still one location in Pompano Beach. Uh, he, has, he is now at 420 locations. He sold the company last year, had a really successful exit. Um, and I and I helped him really through the whole process from beginning to end. Um, that scenario is one that we talked about earlier. Yeah. And and I think going back to all the brands that I've worked with, I would throw you in this boat also, absolutely, where an entrepreneur either has a vision for scale and growth or they get stuck and mired in the day-to-day operations. And so many people that I, that I talk to about franchising, because I'm spending a lot of my day helping people figure out, is franchising a good move? Yeah. Should you do this? And a lot of it really comes down to the mindset of the entrepreneur. And, and I've got cases where people ran and operated much, much better, bigger, more experience in restoration than this guy had. But he had a vision from day one, I'm going to scale this thing, I'm going to push it out to the market. I do not want to be operating the business day to day anymore, any more than I have to. I'm going to teach other people how to do this and I'm going to bring them into my organization. I talk a lot about the book, The E Myth, which mm-hmm. Michael Gerber, if anyone hasn't read that book, you need to. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's written for entrepreneurs that have short attention spans, big print, you know, easy to read, copy yeah. type thing. <laughs> yep. uh, but the whole idea is you cannot build a business if you're stuck in it. Simple sounding, and, it, and it's more complicated once you get into it. Franchising is the most pure version of that. It's, it's now I'm going to stop being paid for what I'm doing with my own two hands, the bike that I'm pedaling every day, and I'm going to get paid for my intellectual property. I'm going to get paid for my brand, my expertise, my coaching ability, my mentorship, instead of my digging the ditch every day to do whatever work that I do. Um, that, in that same system, one of my favorite stories about a franchisee uh, was a guy who was in the janitorial space and he was trying to figure out how to improve his life for his family. He had a young daughter, um, didn't really have any money actually coming into it. Really? Uh, so he used credit cards, a whole bunch of credit cards to buy the franchise. So it was like the most high risk, you know, sort of leap of faith that you could make. Yeah. Uh, four years in, he exceeded $10 million in revenue. Uh, was netting you know upwards of three and a half million bucks a year zone income, completely flipped gears on his entire track in life. Uh, you know, obviously, it, it, and he's an extremely successful entrepreneur. Um, and a big part of that was the fact that the franchisor was there with him, guiding him, coaching him, giving him this plan and this platform. But he was the one who had to pull the trigger and take that leap, and he and he did it. And just awesome to see that that change in his life, that change in his in his family's life, and everyone that. He supports and has an influence on. I love it. No, that's that's such a, a powerful statement right there. It's like, I, I know we've got we have some entrepreneurs. We've got Sam in San Diego. He's he's owned his own business. We've got uh, Keith in Phoenix. Who's owned his own business. Uh, we've got chiropractors in uh, Texas. Uh, we've got a guy that owns a, a car wash in Denver right now. So we've got a lot of, but we're also having conversations with people that have never been an entrepreneur before. A lady that's a banker right now looking at Orange County. She's uh, She's been in banking for 25 years 
and she's amazing. But you're absolutely right. It's that leap of faith. You know, like one of the things that we, we, we do is we, we're very proud of awarding franchises. We do not sell franchises. There's been people to us that come to us with a lot of money that just wouldn't fit our culture and our community. And you see, we're kind of weird around here. So we want them to be weird a little bit with us too. But, but ultimately, it, it, it is a, it's a system that if you follow at ABCD and you have a passion, you got to be passionate and you got to follow, you got to be willing to, to grind and have a little bit of grit and determination. But if you can get through those one or two stores, it is so, so much easier to scale to get to 15 or 20. Um, and, and it doesn't take somebody that has entrepreneur experience. Sometimes it's, it's okay. This is a lot easier than do it on your own because there's a system involved and there's a phone of friend. Anytime you have a, a problem, there's always somebody there. So from, I mean, from your eyes, from a franchising standpoint, you've seen it all. And I love the story about somebody, all of their credit cards, because it is a lot of, of pressure. People are like, okay, I'm, uh, here we go. We're all in. But if it, I, I've done it 50 times in my life, I've been all in. I wouldn't have this building. I wouldn't have any building that I'm involved in. I have commercial <laughs> real estate. I have all my 401ks and everything that you see. Like I have, I have leveraged everything to get to the next level every single time. But that's a part of the journey. But because I have, I've burned the boats and the boats are not there anymore. I can't turn back around. When, you know, when I've left my career after times, I've burned the boats, figured it out. And, and, and I love that because that's the entrepreneur spirit. Is you you got to figure it out. But you will figure it out. If, if you've levered all your credit cards and you have no other way to pay your mortgage, you're sure in the hell going to figure out what do I got to do to make this work? I, I, I love the burn the ship saying. I use that all the time. It's a great, great way to phrase it. Um, your DNA is different from most people. You know, the, the person who has the, the tolerance for risk that you have and the ability to just push all the chips on the table, have complete faith, complete commitment and, yeah. and zero looking behind, over your shoulder type thing. It's like all the way in, very, very few people have that. And, and I'm not that person either. Yeah. Um, what a franchise does, I think instead of all the chips, it lets you kind of push 80% of your chips. Absolutely. You know, and, and you've still got like the, those, that it. little reserve back <clears throat> because you've got the support, you've got the plan, you've got that, that crazy entrepreneur that's led the way yeah. and got the arrows in their back to be yeah. like, do this. Got it. Um, the, uh, you know, I really like the mattress segment in general. Um, there are not very many retail segments that have the volume per transaction that you have here, um, the margin per transaction that you have here, and a product that is so widely in demand. Everybody so, sleeps. Everybody sleeps. Yeah, we all, we all have to do yeah. that. Um, so it, it's been a space that I've, I've always felt is a strong one where I think that Snooze comes in with so much opportunity, and, and you used it earlier, just one of the, the big vendors out there, big suppliers out there told you this, which was made it even more impactful, but yeah. this is the first time that someone has come in with a completely market-disrupting approach to the space. The technology, the customer experience, the buying process, uh, the value to, a, to a, a mattress purchaser in the store, all these things are game-changing. And what I think makes that exciting, just going back to the different people in the system right now, Sam and Keith, chiropractors, is this model is appealing to people that maybe don't come from the retail segment or from the mattress Absolutely. industry. And it's so widely appealing because of that. I think once we start, anyone who sees the store, who gets in the store and goes through it and just experiences it, they, they get it, they see it. And that's what makes this model even more exciting from how many people we can help here now become an entrepreneur with it. I love it. And I appreciate that. That was going to be my next question is what do you think of these weird people at snooze? So yeah, <laughs> I, you know, and I appreciate the the risk thing. I mean, one thing I, I always like to talk about, even in the book, I talk about like positivity is a muscle and the more you use it, the more positive you get. I do believe that risk is the same way. I know that I have this, this, this thing in my head that I, I take risks every day because I'm just, I'm, I, I look fearless from the outside in, but I do believe I've built that muscle over the last 20 years. I've had carpet cleaning businesses. I've had, you know, uh, party buses, uh, spas. I can tell you all the different risks. And as I took those risks and was able to figure out how to solve a different industry's problem, I think it gets easier. You know, now it's just like, okay, I'm, I'm all in and I make decisions just quicker than I could ever make in my life because I don't have time to think about it. It's like, here's the decision. We're all good. Let's run. Let's just go as fast as we can. So I do think that, that you're right. Getting into a franchise mitigates that risk, but taking more risks helps mitigate that risk too. You know, you know, I, because again, my, my wiring is probably more comparable to a franchisee. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're, you're the entrepreneur. You're the yeah. one who just did that, that uh, chip, that concern over risk just wasn't put in and when you were created. Um, for me, when I left a W-2 job, you know, I got a paycheck every other week. Yeah. I had a retirement account. I had insurance. Yeah. 
And, and, and then when I started my own business, it was like you go through this whole sort of evolution where the way I described it is the floor was pulled out from underneath me because as before, that's what you're looking at. Like, I, I hope my paycheck keeps coming. I like my, my retirement and my insurance. That gets yanked out from underneath yeah. you. And you look up and you've got all this opportunity above you. The sky opens up. Yeah. And now your focus isn't on, I need to have the safety. It's what next can I do? Yeah. And totally agree. Okay. Once you make that leap, it's like then the next leap, whatever that might be. Maybe it's a second or a third franchise. Maybe it's a different business. Uh, it becomes easier. Yeah. You know, you, you've done it. You've gotten over that, that big concern. Yeah. Um, and I think we need to talk about getting this party bus thing ramped up again. Let's Dude, do I'm this. Out of this. Epic party bus. <laughs> I did sell that here in town. So, um, but it's still going, you know, you can still rent this bus if you really wanted to. Um, but it. that was trouble. I, uh, long story short. So as far as, you know, snooze. Let's talk about just for a quick second. I mean, I, I appreciate your comments. I mean, yes, we are blessed to have Tempur-Pedic and, and Sealy and, and the Mayo Clinic and uh, Pillow Makers and some of the biggest partners in the world. Wells Fargo are helping, you know, putting all eggs in that we're, we're running and we've got the right systems to do that. You've seen a little bit about you. We have a 905 meeting here. If anybody that hasn't seen that every morning, we get in a giant circle, 905. And it's really to talk about successes and what are we working on right now. But it's, it's, a, it's a fun mechanism to brag about each other. But beyond that, get the day started with a couple claps and some smiles and just, just screaming around a thing. Uh, so you, you experienced that today. You saw a little bit of our team. You've toured this place from the theater where we're doing the franchise training to the green rooms where we're helping do their commercials. We're trying to do everything we can to make sure that these guys are successful. And if we don't have it figured out, we're committed to making sure that we will figure that out and have an answer for every franchisee coming through here. So, you know, in your eyes, I mean, what do you, what do you think of this, this, this snooze thing? I know we've been able to talk a little bit about it. You've had some nice things to say, but where, where do you think we, we got three stores right now? We've, so we've got 18 coming up and running. Uh, we've got three officially opened, but we've got a lot of exciting momentum going on right now. Tell me, tell me a little bit about us. Yeah. And, and I, I, and I, I've done this type of work for a long time 21 years. I've worked with easily 2000 brands going through this process, launching a franchise system. So a, a lot of time with perspective on brands in the same position. Yeah. What, what has blown my mind with what you were doing with snooze is you've, you've checked every one of the boxes. And, and, and that's tough when you're a new system, because yeah. w when you first go to market, you don't have the buying power. You don't have like the, the brand recognition. You don't have the scale yet. So a lot of times we're kind of stretching to make our presentation sound yeah. like we've got value. <laughs> yeah. uh, here we, we've got everything. I, I mean, just yesterday, you know, I'm talking to one of your team members, Andrew, uh, and he's having a conversation with, you know, a multi-billion dollar uh, supplier in the mattress space who they're the ones who said, guys, this is the most significant market disrupting model that we have seen ever in, in their time doing mattress work. It's like, man, that does not get said about a company yeah. that has three locations very often right. uh, at this stage. Um, the store design, the marketing ability, um, I think I'm allowed to say this, a time with Grant Cardone. I mean, absolutely. And, and, and again, to that point, he is not someone who jumps into a business unless he sees all this opportunity and all these things. Absolutely. Um, I, I can't think of another system that I have been with, seen, or worked with at this position that has this much potential, this much marketing power and, and capability to scale. I just am thrilled about the opportunity. Um, I said earlier today at the 905, which I love the 905, by the way. Yeah, yeah you kind of come into it like a little bit nervous. You're like, I don't know What's what I'm going to do here. I start before screaming. You, well, before you know it, I'm clapping, I'm spilling my coffee, I'm pumped up. So I, it, it's that culture, too, that I just think it's, it's, uh, it's contagious. Uh, people want to be around that. I'm going to try to make my own 905 when I go home. With Let's it. go. I love it. <laughs> I'd start with do me it. and my wife clapping. Let's you know, go. but Get the kids involved. Uh, right, right. I, it's, it's all of that that I think uh, is going to make this a phenomenal system. And I'm just, I'm truly just thankful that, that you've given me a chance to be part of it. I love you. it. And we're, we're very blessed and honored. I mean, you come so highly recommended. You are definitely one of the best in the world at what you do. So, and, and thanks for flying out here to make the time with us. This has been, it's been a blast. I know it's been crazy and there's a lot going on. We're trying to do a lot of things, but there's no doubt there's, there's a lot of things that we'll be working on in the future. So, you know, if, you know, just to give yourself, I mean, what, what can you offer somebody out there that might be looking for a franchise? I mean, I know that from our standpoint, we're working on a lot of marketing and a lot of how do we brand and how do we help continue to grow the brand out there? So it, it, it's a win-win for all of our franchisees in it. Now, the long-term, the short-term, how do we keep increasing our buying power? How do we get more, uh, you know, 
viewers, you know, how do we get more people out there seeing who we are? Because that, to me, success breeds success. And that's what this is all about. Our relationship is how do we get it to the next level, which is going to help everybody know who we are everywhere they go out there. So, But from your standpoint, you could even take somebody on a little bit earlier than, than you and I are now talking. We, we could, yeah. And so I... I would, you know, welcome the opportunity to, to anyone who owns a business who's trying to figure out ways to scale it and to replicate the model. Um, I'm doing a lot of very early on conversations, no obligation consultations to help people figure out is franchising a viable way for you to grow, a viable way for you to scale uh, your business and your brand. And and this this is not industry specific either. It's it's retail, it's service, it's business services, it's uh, landscaping. We've worked with just about every shape, size, and type of business you might might imagine, um, and we've we've got a client that does uh, goat herding that nice. puts goats into the yard. And they eat the yard, you know, instead of having a mechanized landscaping what? service. Uh, we franchised a. Uh, we've got a new one that's a stunt air, uh, aerial acrobatics franchise. They. Uh, replicate this model giving rides to uh, people where they can do air combat. No uh, so I've seen the, the gamut, you know, uh, we had one that we franchised that uh, rented monkeys for parties. This was a long, long time ago. So they've replicated the model to give nice. theme parties to monkeys. Oh, I love so this. My, my point in all that is there, there's really no limit to what can be franchised. There's definitely some core competencies. The business model has to work. We need to have financials that make sense. Uh, there needs to be a system that is capable of being taught, um, you know, good brand and, and a market segment that, that is, is, has opportunity for new locations and new growth, a consumer market segment that can justify growth. Um, again, I would say snooze, check, 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 check. All the boxes could not be more excited about where we're going with this. Um, I really believe that I will be telling whoever has given me an opportunity to do a podcast in the next two or three years I'm going to be talking about snooze and and probably trying to take way more credit than I should be due. Take it all. Take it all. He was there when we had three. You heard it on this podcast today. So I love it. Thank you. There's Thank there's you. no doubt. We I mean, the goal is for us is, is truly to get to that thousand location mark and to really dr- disrupt the industry with the right humans, you know, to really make a difference in people's lives, helping entrepreneurs grow, but finding the right people to fit our culture. You know, I mean, that is the most important thing that we do here is making sure that we protect the name snooze, we protect the brand snooze, and we're not just going to run to run. We're going to run with the right people and, and make a difference in everybody's lives. So I love that. You're, you're an amazing man. I mean, how, how, do we, uh, how do we find you on social media? Where are you at? You're on LinkedIn. You're, uh, you got your own website, FMS. T- t- how do we find you? I am, man, but I'm, I am an old 43-year-old. Like I, a Facebook, you can find us on Facebook. Okay, you're on Facebook? <laughs> I am. If, if you go to our website, www.fmsfranchise.com, okay. that's the website. Uh, we've got an 800 number, 800-610-0292. Call, um, either talk to me directly or any one of our franchise consultants there. would love to hear from anyone who's considering franchising, both buying a franchise or possibly looking at franchising your business. Call us, email us, text us, Facebook us. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Truly an, an amazing man. I, I can't brag enough about you. I think one thing I, I judge people kind of by the way that their, their employees talk about them. And I, I told you that this morning, but I have dealt with uh, probably five or 10 of your employees throughout this process. And every single one of those has nothing but amazing things to say about you and all the stuff that you're doing for them. So that says a lot about you. It says a lot about your company and what you stand for and your morals and your family first and your why and all of that. So truly Chris Connor, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for flying into Pueblo. Thanks for having a slopper with me yesterday in Pueblo, Colorado, experiencing a little bit more from here. You're going to go see some of the stores. And, and I think the journey between the two of us has only just begun. And I'm really excited about that. So this has been another episode of if you don't snooze, you lose and dream big. Actually, I have one more question for you. I can't even end this yet. I got one question that I have to finish this podcast with. What does dream big mean to you? Think about it for a second. I might have to cut that. Put him right in the spot. (laughs) But that's the the dream big podcast is truly about people that dream big. And you are, you are definitely an epitome of that. You've, you've come your story. We didn't even get into it today, but you, you went from not getting paid for a long time to, to making this all work out. Yeah. You know? Uh, So what does dream big mean to you? You you know, I, I think our whole life and it starts from the age of one month on, we, we are taught what we can't do. Um, and maybe it's a peer, 
Maybe it's a schoolmate. Maybe it's your parents saying you can't do something. Uh, certainly, once you get in the workforce, you know, you're taught you can't do something or you're not good enough to do this. You didn't get this job or, you know, this is your role. This is your skill set. Um, I think the thing that I, I love about dreaming big and entrepreneurship is it flips the script and, and it opens up people's eyes to possibilities, not only for professional and financial and all that great stuff that comes with it, but for personal. Love it. And no one is happier, more satisfied with their work, more committed to it and excited to wake up every day than someone who owns their own thing. And it's their baby, it's their passion. Um, that's dreaming big to me. You know, it's realizing possibilities for, for yourself as much as, as business. And sky's the limit on that. So I love that. Great answer. So anyway, Chris, Connor, thank you for being down here. Thanks for coming from Atlanta, uh, flying in. I'm sure you will be on future podcasts when we we're talking about the 300th or the 3,000th 3, location that we have out there with Snooze Mattress Company. So uh, again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. This has been another episode of Dream Big, where our goal is to find the biggest dreamers in the world and help tell their story to help tell you a path to get there. Stay tuned for the next episode of Dream Big. Only here. Wake up! So I heard you're interested in starting a podcast. Hmm. Interesting. And you're probably wondering, do I have what it takes to start my own podcast? Do I have the studio? We've got the studio. Do I have the editing skills? Do I have the ability to post it? Do I know how to do that? You're probably wondering through all these things and it can get a little overwhelming. I know I've been there. Trust me. I've tried to start some of my own before I got connected with Wake Up. And I know that that's tough, especially when you're trying to run your business. You're trying to be in your business. Well, I'm here to tell you with my help, it'll be a breeze. Hey, I'm Ben Kaysen, the podcast director from Wake Up Pueblo. Um, you may have seen us on the Discovery Channel. We were a part of Undercover Billionaire with Grant Cardone. And if there's one thing we learned from Grant Cardone when he was here, it's that if you want to be heard, you need to put yourself out there to be listened to. Hello and welcome to Wake Up Podcasting. I'm Ben Kaysen here at Cardone Capital, enjoying the awesome studio. Thank you for joining us. Me and the 10X crew, we want to make sure that you have a successful podcast series within your budget. Don't worry about the editing software or the equipment. I got you covered. Just bring your guests and what you want to talk about, and we'll handle the rest. This is Ben Kaysen. That's a wrap. If you want to work with me, give me a call.